Hi friends, it's Michelle with National Veteran Resources and today I have my dear friend Dave here with me and Dave and I are Patriot Guard riders and I've also gotten to know his lovely girlfriend, yes. Linda, who I absolutely adore. And um, recently I found out more about Dave and um, Dave served five years in the Navy uh, but also off and on in his career as a volunteer firefighter, EMT, mm -hmm. too, of course. Yep. And um, so, Dave, I would like you to say hi to the audience. Hi, everybody. This beautiful young lady is making such a huge difference. Oh, <laughs> it's not about me. Yeah, it's not about <laughs> any of us. It's about the team. Um, so before I do these interviews, we sit and chat for a little bit so I know a little bit of direction on what we're going to talk about. Um, Dave, you shared some really neat experiences about uh, your Navy time. Yeah. And um, if you would like, you can share anything about the Navy and we're going to really get into your firefighter career and how it your career affected you and how we think we can help others. Well, that's um, sure. Uh, the Navy was an absolute awesome career, so to speak, five years. Um, I met a ton of friends. We did some really interesting things. And um, the team camaraderie building, we do not do this alone mindset applies so much to life. Um, saw some bad things. I was a photographer in the military. Um, had photograph crash sites, fires involving military people. Um, there's some images that just don't go away, but it's stronger to talk about them than it is to keep them to ourselves because the darkness inside our heads, inside our own minds is potentially catastrophic. And as a team together, we can, um, there's no shame in asking for help, you know, and that's really what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. um, no one is alone and nothing is ever so bad that it isn't going to get blue out again. No matter how dark today is, no matter how dark this particular moment in your life is, the sun is going to shine again. It's going to get blue out. So... You've been in those places. Oh, absolutely. You've come so far. Yes. Do you want to? Do you want to share anything about what got you to that point, or what you did once you got to that point? Well, the the despair I've saw. I've seen some things in the fire service that I can't unsee. Um, I held an 18 year old girl at graduation as she died in a car accident and she said, uh, I'm getting cold and I knew what that potentially meant. And I said, you're going to make it, Vicki, you hang in there. I'm with you. And she said, I don't think I'm going to make it. She says, but just tell my mom, I'm sorry. I wrecked the car. That was the last thing that she said. So me and Jack Daniels took care of the image for years and it did not help. The first thing that helped was asking for friends, having resources like Michelle, like the crisis teams that the fire department now starts to offer. Because there is, like I said, there's absolutely no shame in asking for help. You been going to meetings? Yes. And I've been sober for 21 years and the grace of God and finally having a willingness to want to live because all the medication, all the alcohol, all the drugs, the problem was still there when I came to. And I finally came to believe that there was a better way. Um, quick, quick segue, the gentleman that became my first sponsor followed me around for about three weeks and he 
hundred empty, hundred chairs in a basement, 40 of them empty. And he kept sitting exactly next to me and he kept leapfrogging around. Every time I moved, he moved. And I said, what's your problem, pops? I don't want to join your cult. And I just want you to leave me alone. And he asked me, why does a baby wear a dirty diaper? <laughs> and I said, what are you talking about? And he said, well, you're sitting in your own crap, blaming everybody else that your life stinks. And so you have to take action. And that taking action kept me from swallowing a bullet, having my children in my life, and having a pulse, which mm -hmm. I now have renamed an opportunity, because some people have been denied an opportunity. And like I said, it's going to get blue out. There's help out there. We just have to ask for it. And there's no weakness in asking. We've been sharing stories back and forth just, you know, over, it's been over 10 years now that I've been working with military and police and firefighters and EMTs and healthcare providers, nurses and doctors. Um, and in the real estate world, they were sharing their stories with me because I spent a lot of time with them, especially when they're buying houses. Mm -hmm. And uh, just in the last five, six months, when I started National Veteran Resources, I have heard some of the most horrific stories. Um, we've laughed, we've cried, I've learned an awful lot, but still I see so many that I've interviewed, the look in their eyes. And as much as they tried to tell me that they're okay, I still see, see it in their eyes. And so I know that you guys are gonna have dark days. But the will to live is stronger for you. Absolutely. And besides going to AA meetings, um, all the different careers have the different sets of counselors that they could go to, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, any other suggestions? Um, I know someone that I know and love very much who's very... Um, very isolated, won't talk to me about anything going on. Um, I've had hundreds of offers for him, for them to talk to him. He um, won't take them up on it. When you got somebody like that, what is there anything that you can suggest? The gentleman that told me to change my diaper also told me if I didn't hear my story or if I didn't like what I heard there, try his way for 30 days and he would refund my misery if I didn't like it. And he also told me to circulate to percolate. Mm. There's 300 meetings in Rochester in a week that deal with all kinds of substance, whether it's alcohol or drugs or uh, gambling. I mean, there's so many support groups out there if we ask for them. But after a little while going to many different meetings in many different locations, someone will tell your story somebody will hit something that you relate to. Mm -hmm. I was blessed that it happened within about two weeks. Somebody had the same story as me. The, when my daddy didn't love me, my daddy hit me, I was grounded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only thing that we can control in life is our reaction. And one of the most important reactions that I believe we have to share amongst our brothers, whether it's fire, EMS, police, um, military together we can it's a team effort um, the darkness the gentleman that became my sponsor also said to me he asked me point blank he says you know where the most dangerous place in the world for you to be is pretty simple question right a bar stool he said no the six inches between your ears the next time you have a brilliant idea, pick up the phone and get a second opinion. Here's my number. Mm. And that was the first time anybody actually invited me to be part of in a while. Because once I started to self-medicate, I wasn't a very nice person. That I can't believe. <laughs> well, it's, it's the, definitely the Jekyll and Hyde. I knew I was going to be an idiot. I didn't know if it was going to be on the first one or the second one or the 90th one, but I knew that one was not enough and 90 was too, or one was too many and 90 wasn't enough. 
Mm. And um, that's the way the fire service and even the military, we got this, we're tough, we're men. Well, guess what? It's okay to cry, it's okay to share your emotions. And for God's sake, it's okay to ask for help Mm -hmm. because someone is going to have a similar circumstance that you can relate to. Even if it's just to become coffee buddies, to just have an outlet to talk. The cemeteries are full of people who are all right. I've got this. I'm fine. Potentially fatal words. I've heard that a lot. It's the way we were wired. There's something about running in when everyone else runs out that it's the greater good. What if that was your mom or dad or grandma or neighbor that needed help, whether it be a fire, an accident? What if nobody came? What if there was no one there? It's the greater good, the team, together we can. I mean, I can't say that enough. You guys, these men and women that serve us and protect us, that are, whether they're paid or volunteer, they're putting their lives on the line for us every day. And they see and do so much. And then they're expected to transition Hmm. and be normal when they get out of the military or out of their fire careers or law enforcement careers or, you know, even our healthcare professional careers. And so together we can make a difference. Amen. And we need to help stop the suicides. My whole mission in life is to help stop these suicides just by my friend Dave sharing your story. Um, He's lived it. He's done it. He's been through it. He still goes through it sometimes. Most of them do. Um, I've never experienced it. I'm not a counselor, Um, but I'm hoping that um, your willingness to share your story um, is painful. It's, it's got to be very painful at times to think about it and talk about it. Yeah. But your message is helping. You, you know, I have a little bit of a viewing. <laughs> and I'm going to ask you all to share this as well it's, to get our message out. Yes. it's um, There are things that you can't unsee. But we can work through them if we reach out for the resources. I mean, in almost 40 years of service in the fire department as a volunteer, um, just because we didn't get a paycheck didn't mean we weren't professional. Doing CPR on a six-month-old and not having a good outcome and having the triage nurse. It's okay. You can tell them. I had never seen her show any emotion. The mother was isolated. The father worked an hour away. Both of their families were an hour on each side of Rochester. And she had not, this nurse, this triage nurse had never shown any emotion in all the years I had known her. And when she came walking out of the 500 room with tears streaming down her face and told this mother that there was nothing they could do, you know, that's an image I just cannot ever forget that this, that, that despair in that mother's face Jack Daniels couldn't cure that. He tried. I went on about a four-day bender. And that lifeless baby in my arms doing CPR was still there. Every year at CPR Refresher, I struggle with the infant portion because that's exactly the prone position that that mannequin is simulating. Um, But... Eventually, the ego got out of the way, and I asked for help. 
and I realized that there was a solution. Um, this beautiful young lady with the resources that, that she's offering, and I just implore people to ask for help. Um, Christmas Eve, a couple years back, uh, 2012, a very dear friend of mine that was a lieutenant in the Webster Police Department and a fireman in West Webster mm. was murdered by a crazy man. And to be on that scene, and because it was a crime scene, to be fighting a fire and looking over your shoulder, it was an external attack, exterior attack, excuse me. Um, we basically had master streams on the fire just trying to control the exposures because the buildings were lost. And to look over your shoulder and see a tarp knowing that your friend was laying underneath it on Christmas. You're talking about Michael? Yep. Chip. Chip and Tomas. Chip and Tomas. And the others that were shot. And Joe and, Te uh, Joe and Ted. Um, I didn't know you were there. So I was a Webster resident at the time. I was there. Um, I was a Patriot Guard rider mm -hmm. and stood out in the freezing cold for them. And um, at the high I school. didn't at the high school. And I didn't realize that you were there. We came in school buses. They broke up the battalion in shifts so mm -hmm. that it wasn't overwhelmed. We we're at the high school. Mm -hmm. um, we all transported out in school buses to school district gave us school buses so that all the firemen could go there because parking was obviously a logistical mm -hmm. nightmare. But um, he was a mentor and a friend. Since I didn't drink, we had many conversations when the shenanigans would be going on. Um, he was our fill-in crew. Mm -hmm. um, and I would pick his brain as a uh, firefighter and as a captain about getting our youth involved and asking them how their Explorer program was so strong. Um, those images will put you in a grave if you let them. But I firmly believe that if we ask for help and we accept that that's an opportunity to reach out, talk to each other, you know, buddy check. Everybody does the buddy check on social media for every 22nd of the month. Make it a daily occurrence. Together we can. If we save one more life, it's worth it. You're worth it. Fight the fight. Ask for help. Amen. Amen. Love it. We're going to do this. Thank you, honey. Guys, please share these videos, especially this one. Um, if you know of anybody that has ever served in the military, police, firefighters, EMTs, the healthcare profession, um, every day we're hearing way more than 22 a day, not just our veterans, but our, our first responders. Um, maybe this guy here and his message can make a difference. So I implore you to please, please spread the word. Um, every day I'm getting more resources on nationalveteranresources.com. Awesome. Um, I'm trying to find hundreds in every state. I've just started a few months ago. So as I say, keep looking back. Um, I'm trying to do everything I can to share as many things I find on Facebook. Um, and as I travel the country, I'm going to be looking for resources. I'm looking for uh, heroes to interview to share their stories so please please just know that we can all make a difference and uh, we really appreciate your time I thank you so much for your services thank you Michelle it's um, not about it's not about me it's about the greater good and it's about team together we can yes. because everyone out there is a brother a mother a father a sister somebody's kid and you're all worth it yes thank you thank you okay we're gonna say goodbye now bye, bye now god bless you god. and those of you guys that are serving actively absolutely in any of these fields please be safe god stay bless. safe god bless god bless